On this episode, I'm going to be taking you through my road trip across America and showing you where I slept. I'm an adventure filmmaker. My name's David, and I ended up doing a three-month road trip across America where I did 74 mountains or 105 hikes. And to do this, I needed to be able to sleep in my vehicle, my Honda CRV. It's a 2009, which I converted, has a bed in it. And I'll show you all the different places I slept. There's a lot of creative places. I didn't pay a dime for anything, uh, hardly. If you're new to van life and you're scared where to sleep, uh, this is the video for you. I start off on Vancouver Island up here in the middle. So I took this ferry down here. Um, the reason for that is I had my drone test in the US to be able to fly my drone test there. I had to fly my drone, I needed to take the test there at the airfield. So the first night I was really scared and I found this place. It turned out to be perfect. Uh, I slept here near Harper Park. Now, I'll show you here what this looks like. Um, the main rule here is I slept legally. If there was a sign that said I couldn't sleep, stay there overnight, I didn't stay there overnight. Um, now, some of the areas might not be able to sleep there, but there was no sign. Um, then that's the case. Well, you can see here, there's no sign here. Now, for this one, there's no bathroom either. So this was just a place to sleep. There was a trail up here. Uh, ironically, this is a Honda CRV, but that's not mine because I had a rooftop box on it. But there was a trail here. You can go into the, the woods and take a piss, but that was basically it. It was somewhere just to sleep for the night. So now if we go back, I went... From there, I took my drone test, uh, as stated there, and down, and I was gonna do some stuff over here, but it just, everything was like closed or whatever, so I ended up going over here. So I started hiking some mountains here, and first off, the, the place I found was here. Now, I started using some of those van life apps, and they just didn't work out for me. Like, they were not good places. You had to pay. There was RV parks to 10, 20, 30 bucks a night. Like, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for free. I'm already paying for expensive gas. I need somewhere free to sleep. So uh, some tips here I'll be putting throughout the video. Search for parks, because parks always have bathrooms. And then you can look, does it have water? Does it have a plug? Because these are the main things you want for van life. So this here, um, this road is great because there's a, there's a like a basketball court and there's a bathroom right here. And there's also a water fountain. Now, one, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to park like right here in front of this person's house because People are psychological about that. If someone's in front of their house, they, are they stalking me? Are they gonna mug me? Like, just don't do that. But this place is perfect because there's a plot of land here with no one, like someone probably owns that, but there's no house there. So there's one, two, three, four spots. I wouldn't park in these last like one or two because you're getting too close to this person's house, but I parked right here. So now wherever I have these marked where it says sleep, this is quite literally exactly where I parked my car. Um, the main reason is because it's flat. So you don't want to park in somewhere where it's like slightly angled and then even if you have those boards you pull out to put underneath your wheels to level it, it makes it too obvious that you're van lifing. So you want to find something that's flat, you just put up your curtains. I don't have a video on uh, you know, DIY discrete curtains, you can block out your windows. Uh, check that out, it's actually <laughs> the most popular video on my channel. Um, and those worked out perfect. People couldn't tell I'm in there, they couldn't even see the lights inside my vehicle when it was uh, nighttime. So I slept there. Uh, two nights, I think, and then I kind of overstayed my welcome. I left there and I went, because uh, I was waiting to do these two hikes, uh, Little Sai and uh, Rattlesnake Ledge. This is the second most popular hike in the United States, so I had to do it. So I spent four nights in this area waiting for a weather window. I got a two hour weather window to do that one. And that video is online if you're curious what that looks like. Um, so from there, I end up going down to, uh, so this is uh, Snoqualmie up here and I went down to North Bend, which is uh, this area here. So the only one I missed here was this here. I parked right there where this white vehicle is. Uh, there was van lifers on this entire street for the like two, I think two nights I stayed here. So this is fantastic because it's flat and there was a bathroom right here. You can see restroom. So after that, um, and this is nice too. Like I said, you're not parked across. There's a green belt here. There's no house directly right across from this. And it's right on a park. Um, often if you go inside these, there's no parking here. Because then it's in like the district of that park and not the road. So you're allowed to park on roads. I think most towns and cities, it's at least 24 hours. And that's more than you need. You just need eight hours. So you just need somewhere where people leave you alone and it's flat. So watch out for that. A lot of these you can't park. And I think that's the case with this. No parking overnight is usually what it says. Uh, this one though, no signs here. So you park there. So I parked there two nights and then I did these two hikes, got out of there. So now if we go down here further, uh, I drove, let's see here, up here uh, to this pass and up. 
and over to Saddle Rock, did a hike here. Um, this one, I ended up parking at a Walmart uh, up here, I think. Yeah, and I parked here. This was kind of rough. Usually I try to park right next to the garden section if it's summertime. It just smells better, it's nicer. You can kind of hide your car in there. Um, often there's a tap or like a hose they use to water the <laughs> the plants. So you can quickly fill up your, your big jug of water. So that's where I parked for there. That water actually in this town is disgusting. It's like full of tannins and it's just got that really like minerally taste. So after that, uh, I went down here, Columbia River kind of vantage point, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just drove and drove and drove. I got down here, which is, uh, this is actually on the, the way out. So you can see I have two tracks here, but yeah, I'll just talk about this now. The uh, rest areas are fantastic because that's what they're meant for is resting. Um, there's always a bathroom and often there's plugs. Um, there's usually a fountain, you can get some water. It's kind of a pain sometimes, but uh, this one was nice. There was a lot of mosquitoes there though when I went out, but the views here are fantastic from that rest area. Uh, from here, I went down into this town. Um, I don't know what this town is called. Oh, Baker City, that's right. So uh, often what I would look for is a public library because I needed to upload my YouTube videos. So I'd work on one, but I need like proper internet to upload. I can't do it off my phone. So I, I slept right here. <laughs> this is the last spot. There's no more spots here in uh, Baker City. And the, the Wi-Fi thing in the building, I think was like right there. So I had Wi-Fi all night. Uh, I think I actually sat there and just watched some Netflix and relaxed um, and I was able to upload my video. So I just did one night there. I didn't feel unsafe. I didn't feel like it's the safest spot, but you know, I got the job done. I found out later, I'm pretty sure there's a public bathroom like right in there somewhere. I found out in the morning because uh, I went in there to do some stretches. So in that park there. After that, I drove out here and I stayed in uh, this Boise, Idaho. So once you get into bigger cities like this, it's it's easier, but it's also harder. So I went near the air, airport here and I found this perfect spot because it was just off the highway. I didn't want to like be spending 20 minutes driving into all this stuff. So usually I just search for a park. And then once I get in there, I'm like, okay, which park? This one was perfect because there's a dead end road. So there's no through traffic. So you're only getting the comfort in and the, these plaza and there's another hotel right here. So I could have parked anywhere here. You could really go back there. This felt kind of sketchy back here. Um, so I just parked right underneath this tree because if you have a big tree, you can hide your vehicle and people don't know. It, it's just, it, you kind of look, you don't look suspicious sitting there. And so I just did that. Uh, I walked over here. There's a bench outside the the uh, hotel and I used their Wi-Fi until it started pouring rain and I went inside. There was a chair right there. Sat there for half an hour, uploaded my YouTube video, um, walked back. Um, you know, back to my vehicle. There's a little like, yeah, pagoda thing here. There's a bathroom in there and there's a water fountain, no plug. So sometimes you get a plug, sometimes you don't, you know, charge up your power bank, that kind of thing. So after that, uh, I did a, like a run up here to this Billy Goat Bluff. <laughs> I didn't go into this in my video, but this is an archery range and there's active archers down there. <laughs> so I really had to get out of there real quick. I just saw this little rocky bluff. <laughs> yeah, that ended up being a little bit sketchy. Um, and from there, I went down into Twin Falls. This is a beautiful place. There's Pillar Falls. I have a video on that as well. Shoshone and Dirks Lake, all that. Uh, so if you want to check that out, that's cool. But uh, for this one, I slept at the public library here in this exact spot. There was a bathroom right there. And there's also Wi-Fi right on the building on that side. So often if you're close enough from the road, you get Wi-Fi at night in your car, which is great. And this was flat. So I slept there two nights, or no, one night, and then I also slept up here. I just wanted to mix it up. This felt a little bit nicer and safer. This was flat too, but it was, uh, no, it was not completely flat. It's like, it's rounded to have the rain roll off. So if you drive to the very front, you can kind of get it to crest over. So some parking, watch out, it's like that. <clears throat> this is in a park, Frontier Park, but there was no signs. So I slept there. Uh, sometimes you don't overstay your welcome. <laughs> So after that, we get into the mountains. So I went down here. Um, Salt Lake City was a pain in the butt. There was nowhere to sleep there. I ended up sleeping outside Anytime Fitness because I have a membership there. That's where I would shower. And I would uh, bring my clothes into the shower with me with some soap and wash them because I found out laundry machines were like so expensive, like 20 bucks to a wash and a, and a dry. It was just ridiculous. So I just started washing them and uh, throw them all over my car and dry them as I was hiking and driving and stuff. So I slept outside the Anytime Fitness 
I just did one night, did Grandeur Peak, and then did this loop around. Um, I slept here at, in Provo at the Walmart and then drove down to this uh, little town here, which I can't remember the name of it, but... Uh, oh, yeah, so this is Richfield, and there is a nice tiny little old building here, which was the public library. I slept right out front of it, got Wi-Fi there all night. And then I went down to uh, Bryce Canyon, and... I slept here. This is the nicest rest stop in all of America that I've seen. It's absolutely incredible. The Hoover rest area. Just mark this down your map. Let me show you here. So you can see there's just like chunky mountain rocks everywhere. Like it's just incredible. The view is just amazing. Um, <laughs> there's bathrooms here. You'll notice that some bathrooms, they're like this one. They're really short. Like the stalls go to here. So if you're decently tall you can just look in <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> like were people that short in the 60s when they built these but uh aside from that there's water there's nothing else um now outside of bryce this is probably going to be uh, helpful for a lot of people bryce canyon uh you can't stay like obviously in the park there's a pines rest area just outside i spent four days here because i was dying of covid <laughs> after I did my first hike there. Um, there's a flat spot right there. That's where I slept. There's also a flat spot there, and there's also one here. These two were always taken when I was there, so I just took this one. Um, and the further you get between these, it kind of starts to slope. So, And there's a bathroom here. And there's also tables and stuff. So I spent <laughs> four, four nights there. Um, now, some people, what they do is they will go over... This is the visitor center. So before the visitor center, the the line of the park is like right there and it goes this way. So people would drive into this stuff and just like, there's like little spots like you can see here. People will just drive in here and like park. There's no bathrooms, there's no nothing. You know, you can go take a piss in the, <laughs> the rocks, but that's about it. So what I found a lot nicer is, uh, I didn't spend my first night here. I actually came in and did Mossy Cave, um, this hike, and I slept here. Now this is technically in the park. I don't know if this is allowed or not. There was no signs and everyone was gone. It was just pitch black. I got out here like late. So I just parked here and like you can see the stars and you can see here like the view is incredible. The sun was setting. It was it was quite nice. I <laughs> quite enjoyed that one. Um, and then I went and did uh, Fairyland Loop the next day. Uh, got COVID and then spent four days over in Pines Rest Area, which sucked. So after that, um, did another hike and then got out of there. Um, and actually, I think that's that point when I slept there. Um, and something to note too, this is the Hoover Rest Area, which if you watch, um, I have a video on Big Rock Candy Mountain. This is the big yellow mountain that I hiked up. There's no trail. I just went right straight up like this. Um, there's a spot that's just along this river. You can actually go. There's just tons of areas where you can just pull over and just stop. You could like just sleep anywhere here, really. Um, and I'll just say through this video, I don't know for sure. Maybe someone owns that and you're not allowed. I don't know. But I'm just saying, as a person van lifing, I could have just pulled over and slept. Is it legal? I'm not sure. But it seems like it. But what is interesting is when you get out of this road, at the very start here, uh, something to just pay attention to. There's some rest areas right here. This one. And like, oh, perfect. There's a bathroom on the end and lots of place to park. It is all flat. This one had big, ugly signs saying no overnight parking. So some of them are not friendly to people. Um, after that, I drove over here and I went all the way down to Zion. So I actually stayed in Hurricane. There was a Anytime Fitness and I slept outside there. <laughs> there were some donkeys like just <laughs> right on a fence on the other side that stunk. I had my windows open. It was like 28 degrees at night. Stinking donkeys going all night. So something to think about you know i saw them there i should have just left there's a big walmart here so really you can go park right there it's it was actually flat there because i got drone shots from this exact spot and like no one's gonna bother you there um, some walmarts they do bother you in spring springfield on my way back they kicked me out after i bought some stuff <laughs> security came and kicked me out so you know some some walmarts they don't they're not friendly um, I won't ever go back there because that's ridiculous. So now for Zion, I'm going to give you some nuggets here of real goodness. It's really hard to sleep anywhere in uh, Springdale. So Springdale is this town just outside Zion. 
It's very hard to find anything. Yep, like you have to pay out the wazoo for anything there. So expensive. I saw it for free. <clears throat> there's a public library up here. On the side of the public library, there's this road here. And like this gravel kind of patch on the side. And there's like three spots right here that are flat. So I slept there two nights because I had to wait four nights to get my Angel's Landing permit. Um, the only caveat with this is they kick you out at 6.30. Well, there's a sign you have to leave by 6.30 in the morning or you have to start paying. Overnight is free, pay from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. or something like that. Um, I spent two nights there and then I just decided oh, I'm just going to sleep <laughs> in front of the library. So I slept there two nights because of the, the Wi-Fi in the building was right there. So, uh, th and there's other spots here. You could potentially stay up here. Uh, there's a gate here. Don't do this. This was my original plan to go stay up by the amphitheater. Don't do that. I almost got locked in. Don't do that. But the gate is right here. So maybe you could you could sleep right there. Uh, so that's that. And then also at the, the visitor center, like I could have stayed here. I got back from a hike really late. I could have just slept there. I don't know if that's allowed. I asked one person, they said, you're allowed to park overnight. Another person said, you can't stay in your vehicle overnight. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't get a definitive answer. Um, but anyways, after that, I drove out of there through uh, the late hours and then eventually got to this spot here. So once you get into this desert kind of stuff, it's a lot easier to find. You just need a, like somewhere to park. But really, I just look up trailheads because they have a bathroom. At least it's a, it's a pit toilet. It's somewhere you can take crap. Better than nothing. So this is a pit toilet. Um, not all that smelly, not bad actually. And this right here is the only flat area in this whole parking lot. It was like super sloped at the top. So I woke up and there was like a whole bunch of these guys with these trailers with doom buggies and whatever else. Like I was just being swarmed when I woke up. There was no one there when I got there in the, at night. So <laughs> sometimes that happens. You just stuff shows up. So I went over here. Uh, I could have slept here too at Toadstool Hoodoo's. Um, I have a video on this coming out, but this parking lot, it's just a gravel pit, and there was a, there's a porta potty here now. So this is something. From there, I just kept on driving over, and uh, oh, this is Paige. This was just too hot down here, so I just quickly like did Horseshoe Bend and Lake Powell and all this kind of stuff, and then I got out of there. So I drove and drove and drove. Uh, I stayed here at Gooseneck State Park. So Gooseneck State Park, you can arrive there late and uh, you can just pay with a little envelope or whatever. It was like 10, 15 bucks for the night, I think. Uh, the only pay place I ever went to, but this was incredible. If you check out my uh, 74 Summits video, my recap from 2022, uh, I have like three shots, three or four shots from there. And you'll see it's just, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a huge, uh, you can see that better. So you actually camp right you go in here and you go on the left side. You camp here, like, along, um, let me see here. Yeah, yeah, so you camp right here. So each one of these is a, is a like, picnic table. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. I stayed here, I think, and then the land ends uh, somewhere here, like the actual state park. So if you drive out of here, like I did, I got all my drone shots and stuff over here. Uh, you can drive all the way out here. I was a little sketched to drive all the way out there. I didn't want to get a flat. I drove uh, to right there, I think, or maybe here. And that's where I have all my cool drone shots doing this. So and it, you can fly a drone out here because it's not in the state park. Uh, from there, I drove out and up through all this Monument Valley and all these kind of cool stuff. Uh, and then I went up to Wilson Arch and then, oh, Moab. So Moab is a pain in the butt to sleep in, <laughs> in June. It's really hot. It was like 30 degrees at night. You just get cooked. So I would do this more like winter, I don't know, February, but, uh, <clears throat> in Moab. So there's like a visitor center you can park outside of, uh, where is it right here? And there's a spot to plug in, but the, there's a bathroom, uh, you could get Wi-Fi if you had it before they closed, but there's no Wi-Fi password outside. Uh, the bathrooms are closed at night. And same with this this baseball diamond. There's no bathroom. Or there was one here, but it was locked. But um, out of this whole area, I found this spot here is flat. So I slept there one night. Um, I, I never got this spot. This was always taken, but it was super flat. And I slept here, which was great because during the day, 
um, I would go over here to public library and my car was not getting cooked by the heat because there's a tree above me. So something to think about. So I spent uh, a couple nights there and then I just <laughs> couldn't handle it anymore because it's so hot. Um, during that time though, I went and did uh, these here, Corona Arch, I, I already have this video online. Corona Bowtie Pinto Arch, these are like world-class, amazing arches. Um, and then I did all this stuff in Delicate, Double Arch. Um, there's like Tunnel Arch and uh, Devil's Garden, there's a whole bunch. I, this video is already online too, there's like, I don't know, eight or nine, ten arches in that one area. Um, so I tried to get out of there, but I just couldn't make it far enough. I got out here, and to get to this rest stop, you have to drive like all the way back here and then turn around and then come back because the highway is designed kind of stupid. Um, there should just be like a, a thing that goes underneath here. But anyways, this was infested with cockroaches, which was disgusting. They were all sorts of weird, like brown and white and translucent clear. They weren't, there was hardly any like black, black ones. They were like long skinny ones and like tiny ones and green ones. It's very weird, very disgusting. And for some reason I didn't film it at all. I was just kind of like mesmerized by it. I was tiptoeing through them because like they were everywhere. And then I went to bed and I couldn't have my windows open because my <laughs> vehicle would get filled with cockroaches. So... Uh, next day I drove here. I almost got killed by semi-truck right here. Uh, he fell asleep at the wheel and nearly ran me out. Um, that was fun. And then I went to Ure, Ure, Colorado, which is here. Ure is the name of this little town. It's a fantastic little mountain town. Um, there's only two spots in this entire town I found you can sleep. Uh, right there and right there. So this is the only road that's actually flat. But even on the flat road, there's like undulations. There's like a community center here with a public library. So you get water and Wi-Fi and charge your batteries and stuff there. So this was close. So I found this one. It was in front of someone's house. But what I did is I just tried to park like, it actually was more like right there. I tried to park between the houses. Um, I spent one night there and then I spent, I think, two nights here. And for this one, I think I just parked on the end. I don't think it was right there. I think it was maybe on the end. Um, and for bathroom, there's a bathroom up here. There's a trailhead, this Cascade Falls Park. Um, there's a bathroom up here. You can't see it. It's up there. But this thing is so steep. It's like like this steep when you're driving on it. You can, there's no way you'd be able to sleep there. Um, otherwise, you could probably sleep there. But that's not happening. So, um, yeah. And so I did a couple. I did these two mountains, which was really wild. And, uh, yeah, Box Canyon. Then I got out of there, drove down here. Um, I went and did Red Mountain number three, which was incredible. Quite a unique experience. Along here, there's a whole bunch of pullouts, like just stuff like this. Like you can just park anywhere here, um, like this. You know, people are parked here. Just so if you have like a big, like a big van, like a Mercedes or whatever, like you could definitely just pull over anywhere and have, you know, like right here, boom, have a great place. And this is, you know, to park. And this is just all beautiful down here. Uh, and from here, I drove into Silverton. So this is a million dollar highway too, through here. So it's really like <laughs> thousand foot drop as you're driving with quite literally like inches off the highway. Like it's no, no guardrail, it baffles my mind. Anyways, never driven on a road like that in my life. Uh, Silverton was a really nice place. I spent a few days here because it was raining and I slept in the exact same spot every time. This is a visitor center. This spot right here, perfectly flat, no one bothering me. Um, there is a, there is porta potties there and on this side of this, this is an old house converted into a visitor center and they closed like normal hours, like nine to five. So after the normal hours were over, I just go out here. There's an old plug on the outside of the house and I could, you could just plug in your, you know, I plug in my power bank and charge it all up my uh, eco flow. So I always got power from here and then, uh, there wasn't any water. I don't think there was any accessible water. I'm trying to think where I got water in this area. I think I just had water. From, I didn't need to fill up. That's why I'm not really thinking about it. There's also a dumpster here. So there, if you want to get rid of a lot of garbage, there was that there. And it was always open. Um, so after that, I got out of there. I did a couple hikes. And I did a, the... the uh, I tried to summit this mountain, but the rain got me. I went to the gold mill. Um, 100... Uh, uh, gold mine tour. This is incredible here, the Cunningham Gulch. Also, this one here, the Porcupine Gulch. I drove quite a ways up there. That was beautiful too. And uh, then I went and did this Ice Lakes, Blue Lakes, um, this whole hike here. I tried to do this V2 Vermilion. Uh, I got I got 
<laughs> it got cooked going up this was so sketchy and then by the time here i was just toast i had actually lost my phone at the bottom of this mountain so i had to hike down and go back up but anyways that's i highly recommend that if you're a hiker this is like world class like world class hiking right there so from here went back spent another night sleeping there then i went down towards durango i did this castle rock you can see there's a nice big uh like cliff there um this was a weird hike because there's a bunch of bulls that kept on <laughs> chasing me and charging me and stuff but uh durango is a weird town because it's like a town and then another little town it just keeps going uh so you could potentially you know sleep at this walmart uh, i didn't sleep here but if i had to maybe park out here somewhere sometimes you can park on the back sides like this park back here and then you're close enough you get wi-fi from inside from the walmart so pretty cool um but i actually slept here so there's an anytime fitness here so i needed a shower and all this kind of stuff and this is the anytime fitness right there and this was just a perfectly flat spot it was new development but i was just like i'm tired <laughs> i'm just gonna go to bed see if someone kicks me out they didn't let they you know left me alone so i just spent the one night and then got out of there uh, i drove all the way out here and this is a Pagosa Springs. This is a beautiful town. It's a really just kind of weird looking town. Like just, it's kind of, it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not the normal, but I went to the public library. I spent a day just relaxing and editing. So I slept here. This is flat, uh, right at the public library. A homeless guy showed up and started like, he knocked on, or I was, I don't know, I was going through my stuff and cleaning or something. He came up and started chatting with me. And I was like, and it was late. So it's kind of like, eh. I'm not really in the mood to be chit-chatting at like 10:30 at night <laughs> but he, he's like trying to tell me all these spots he's like hey man there's the best spot just over there behind the dumpster you can take a dump back there i was like oh good to know <laughs> so so there's a plug here so i actually ran if you get a really long extension cable you can run from like your you got a big power bank you can run it all the way out there plug it in that's what i did uh, the second night, I didn't really want to have the chit chat about the the dumping behind the the dumpster, so I slept over here. This was really nice, just a big gravel pit uh, by this. But this is all brand new. It's like just nice new parks, and there's a bathroom right here, which was like the nicest bathroom. Um, and it was open late, I'm pretty sure. So I slept there, and then I got out of there. Uh, I went up here, did this mountain, Alberta Peak. This was cool. Um, hiked all the way out there. You can see a bit of a trail down there and then uh, Drove out of there went to this one here This is oh a Walmart in uh, what is this called Ala something it starts with an a Alamosa there we go So this and I just slept I can't remember exact spot. It was somewhere on this side um, It might have been right there actually this looks like a loading dock. It was somewhere over here um, this one I was able to get a garden hose and fill up my water so Sometimes you just ask nice whoever's got the hose and they'll let you fill it up. From there, I went and did uh, High Dune and Zapota Falls. This is uh, the Great Dunes National Park. The High Dune is the highest dune in there, the highest dune in North America. From there, I, I drove, I did that all day and then I came over here and I was exhausted. I was trying to make it down to like one of these towns over here. There's like one here, Trinidad and Raton. I just couldn't do it. So I stayed here in Walsenburg. This was a situation that was pretty dire. Like I was exhausted. There was nowhere. Was a, you can see it's a tiny town. And like you search park and it's like one park comes up. But luckily the, the guy who lives here, I'm pretty sure they saw me drive in. I just drove in here, parked right there, facing this baseball diamond. They didn't bother me. Just, you know got up left early and that was it so that was nice because this was a situation this guy could have come out and said hey can you move along or whatever so this is a community center here but i was right in front of this guy's house uh so after that drove out here and uh and i didn't mark the rest of these because these are all so i went over to see my family here in alabama and all of these are just rest areas because once you get on main highways there's rest stops all the way down because truckers need them so rest stops it's like a 50-50 eh, chance you're going to get an outlet plug. Um, usually there's water though, and they're 100% there's a bathroom. So I did that all the way out here and all the way back. 
And one thing to note, I was in, uh, once I got into Alabama here, I, I stopped to fill up for gas and two guys, I was in the spot like right next to the pump, like 90% of the way in and the last like tiny bit, these guys came flying around with the car and took it over and like wouldn't move. And they started yelling at me like it was their pump and all this kind of stuff, which it wasn't. But instead of getting shot or stabbed, I just let them have it. So I recommend doing the same, you know, in Canada, no one's going to do that stuff. But in the States, mm, let them have the gas pump. So on the way back, I went through uh, Springfield and there's a Walmart here, which is the one that kicked me out. So I parked right there and security, th this Walmart actually hires security to kick van lifers out. So they'll let you go in, spend money, and then they'll kick you out of the parking lot. They don't want you sleeping in their giant parking lot. But anyways, some Walmarts are doing that. They have, um, you know, rules or whatever. Uh, I find anytime you ask management, can I sleep here? They always say no. But if you just do it, no one's going to kick you out. You're there eight hours, you're gone. Like, you're not hurting anyone. Just park off to the side. Be quiet. Put up your, your shades and you're good to go. So after that, these are all rest stops all the way back. And then the last few here in Colorado, I slept here. So I went through... Um, uh, this is actually quite right. I went down here and then I went up, but I did this Royal Arch hike and Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> forget about it. The streets are so tiny, there's nowhere you can park there. So I got out of there and I slept up here in this little tiny place, whatever this is called. And there is a spot right here. Uh, so you, oh, you can check this out. Like I noticed a few times this was a possibility. There's a U.S. Postal Service. So it's, it's not like a house. You can sleep across from it, no problem. And there just happened to be a little park here, Sandstone Park. So I parked right there and there's a bathroom there. And this was actually one of the nicest bathrooms out of all of them. Uh, so that was a nice little spot. There's no plug or water, but at least a bathroom there. And then uh, Estes Park, this town. So every uh, national park has their own little town like, uh, like Springdale in uh, Zion or... Uh, there's also one for Bryce. It's it's really small though, but this one, this is Rocky Mountain National Park right uh, here. Uh, actually, we're right here, all this stuff. So here's Blue Lakes. I did this hike. Um, and Estes Park, there it is. Estes Park is this town. And they don't like van lifers. They charge you $15, I think, 10 or $15 a night just to park in a flat gravel parking lot. Uh, so I wasn't really down with that because I'm like this ridiculous. <laughs> so if you go up here, there's Lumpy Ridge Trailhead. This is also uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. I just uploaded this video, Gem Lake, with a peak. Uh, you can hike up there, super cool. But the, the National Park ends right there, like on this side of the road. And this side of the road, down to like just a little bit, and then goes all the way out here, is some other part of, I don't know what it is, some other district. But it's not Estes Park. Estes Park goes like wraps around that. And it's, just, it's a really weird uh, shape of the actual land, but this part was not in SS Park. So I slept in this gravel parking lot right here. And there was actually a guy sleeping. Uh, I have this in the video if you check out my uh, 74 Summit video. There's a guy with a van sleeping right there, a big sprinter van. But this was enough. You could park, I don't know, 10 sprinter vans there. So I spent two nights there and then I got out of here. Um, and in this case, I would just go in and use the, uh, there's a pit toilet right there in the Lumpy Ridge. So if you go in there, I think before 9 a.m., then you get in there, but otherwise you need a timed entry to go park there. So if you just go in there early, you can use a bathroom and get out. Um, so then after that, I went, drove all through here. This is like up on the tundra and I parked here. I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is allowed. This is what I did because I didn't drive uh, 9,000 kilometers on this road trip to not have access to a trail. <laughs> so I parked right here. This is the only flat parking spot in this entire uh, Milner Pass parking area. There's only like whatever it is, 15 parking spots and it fills up by like 6 a.m. So I went and parked here at like 8 p.m. and I slept there. There was no, tr there was no sign there that says no parking. So um, I don't know because it's in a national park or whatever you can't park there. I don't know. There was no sign. So I parked there. Um, then I went and did this hike. You zigzag up there and 
all the way out here and out to Mount Ida. So that's a pretty wild hike. Uh, there's also another one here, uh, Mount 12150, that's somewhere there. So I summited that one and then went out and did Mount Ida and back. Um, and then I drove all the way back to Colorado. So then I, uh, down, or sorry, to Denver. Um, and I spent a few days there with my brother. He lives there. And then I, uh, he has another house actually over here in Frisco. So I spent, uh, I went and did uh, James Peak, uh, which is there and St. Mary's Glacier, and then went over and spent a couple uh, nights over in his. So it was nice to get out of my van or my uh, CRV at this point, spend a couple nights in his house at Frisco. And um, from here, I did this one here where there's uh, these mountains. We did this one together. And then I did some by myself where I went over and did Mount Snicktow. And then I went, drove back over here and I did Mount Bierstadt, which is a 14er. And um, this one's nice because I did Mount Bierstadt and then just drive, drove up here and I slept right there. This is a flat spot. There's a pit toilet here. And then the next day I did the hike all the way out here and all the way up to there. Uh, Square Top Mountain, this is an absolute monster. And what was interesting about this is this night, so while I was sleeping there in this in the middle of nowhere here there was no one uh there's a few people that hung out for a while and then i don't know by 8 9 p.m they all left and at like four in the morning someone come, comes and parks like must have been right here so we're talking like a couple spots away from me they get out of the car i hear giggling and laughing a guy and a girl they go running into the woods here and then they start having uh some fun <laughs> i can hear it all <laughs> They didn't go very far. It probably wasn't even that far. It was probably like right there. And then they jumped in their vehicle and they drove away. So that happened. Uh, so after that, uh, you know, I ended up doing, uh, the final hike was actually this one. And then after that, I just drove home. So from there, I just drove the same way back, uh, more or less for most of it, except uh, this connection here. So that all this was the same, except for that connection. And my original plan was to go up this way and I took the wrong turn and it went craters of the moon. So, you know, it is what it is. And then I ended up taking this way and then ferry across. So when it comes down to it, um, you can start with those apps like the iOverlander or whatever it is that give you places to stay. But really, you just need to search for a park, uh, public libraries, just things like that. Look for the dead end roads, that kind of thing. And then you'll just get a, a handle of it that like after the first couple of days, I didn't use an app at all. I just figured it out. Um, but at least that hopefully that gives you guys some knowledge if you're getting into this and you want to, you're kind of scared because I was like, oh, where am I going to sleep? Where am I going to park? It's really not that bad. You just kind of get a, a feeling for it. And then, you know, with all these tips, you should be able to figure it out. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode, got some value from it, a little extra behind the scenes of, uh, you know, what my road trip was across America. This was a three month road trip. So hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe until next one. Have a great day.